What's going on, train lovers? This is Real Chief here, and welcome back to Layout Update Part 11. As always, my name is Mike, and we have another great show for you all today. So in today's video, I've added a couple of new accessories to the layout just recently. So let's not waste any more time and get on with the show. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we're over here by the oil field and the first accessory that I want to share with you guys is the automatic stop block signal from Lionel. This signal was made around probably towards 1955 and 1957 if I'm not mistaken. Now when you hook the signal up to an insulated track section, the power gets turned off once the train enters the block. The power gets turned off. The signal goes on, and then after a few seconds, depending how you adjust the switch on the back here, the power will go back on and then the train will start up again. But make sure if you run the train using the automatic stop block signal, make sure that you have the E unit in the forward position only. So to power the stop block signal here, I'm actually using two pieces of insulated track sections. Because I feel like using two pieces of track works better than just using a single piece of insulated track. Now the signal itself here still works pretty good, but the only thing I just have to work on is the lighting. Because when the power is turned off, both the lights go on automatically by themselves, which shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be done that way. Because I've seen videos of the signal where the train stops at the insulated block section, the light turns red, and then when the power goes back, back on, the light changes to green. So if anybody has any suggestions on how I can fix this problem, please let me know in the comments section below. Now in case you guys want to go see the signal in action, I actually made a video on YouTube many years ago, and it was actually my first YouTube video of the signal in operation. And the small loop of track that I had featured a, an Alaska post-war switcher and two boxcars. So as always, in case you guys want to go check out that video, I'll make sure to leave the link in the description for you guys. Now I moved the camera back just a little bit to the other side of the second layout here. And what I have here is the MTH Santa Fe dispatching, or Santa Fe switch tower I mean. And I did have this on my original layout for those of you guys who remember. And I figured that this was the right time to bring it back out, and I thought it would look very nicely next to the Lionel dispatching station. The colors of the dispatching station look very nicely with the switch tower as well. So this part of the layout is going to be my main line for the Santa Fe Railway. Next up, we are at the forest section of the layout on the other side here. As you see, nothing really much has changed other than me adding a couple of figures, including a deer as well as a grizzly bear. Now, you can't really see the grizzly bear, but if we do zoom in just a little bit, let me just see if I can get my camera into position. We can see that he's munching the leaves off a tree here, off a pine tree actually. And if we move the windmill to the side here, we also see that I've added a little addition to the side of the train table. Because for those of you guys who remember, I was considering putting a dog bone section to the upper part of the train layout. Now, unfortunately, the dog bone isn't really going to be happening anytime soon. So in the meantime, this upper section here is going to be my bumper section. And to hold the track down, I'm using a number 52 Lionel gang car, which was made around 1958. Now, all of you post-war collectors out there will recognize this beautiful accessory. This is the operating 445 switch tower made by Lionel in 1952. Now, I only have this here on this side of the layout for the meantime. Because at some point, I would really like to make a freight yard in the center of the table here. 
And I would also like for it to be a little bit of a callback to the 1952 Lionel catalog, because not only do I have the switch tower here, but I also have the barrel loader as well. Right over here where the backdrop is, nothing really much has changed. I did, however, add a pack of wolves to the top of the mountain here, as well as a Lionel airplane next to the beacon tower itself. The very last thing that I want to show you guys today is the first city bank over here, which I have on the main layout. And this is, of course, made by MTH. Now, this is only temporary, just like with the switch tower. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this here or not. I really feel like I should try to maybe add a couple more buildings to see if I still like it there. But overall, it's a really nice piece to have, and I just didn't want it sitting in the box. Now, just by taking a look at it, it's a little dirty, but with a little bit of a cleanup, it should look as good as new. So I hope you all have enjoyed today's little video that I put together for you guys. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to hit the notification bell down below for any other projects that I upload. And the trains that you see running on the video right here are from my little teaser for my next running session. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. But until next time, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all in my next episode. Thanks again, and take care.